Now, no matter what happens in this Saturday's Bell game, DePaul's future is set. The Tigers won the SCAC regular season title, which gives them an automatic bid to D3's playoffs. But as many know, the Bell supersedes everything for the fans of the Tigers, and especially at Wabash, over the past few seasons. While the Little Giants have gone to the playoffs two years in a row, DePaul has won the last two Bell games. In our minds, this is still a playoff game. This is a must-win game. Uh, yes, it's great to beat Wabash, great to keep the bell, but most importantly, it's great to win, and that's what our main goal is. Yeah, I think both schools expect their team to win, so, um, you know, there's just pressure and expectation, but you can't let that get to you. You know, you just kind of kind of block that out and, and, uh, and go from there. Now, this year's bell game will be the first for a former Colt. Check out James Mungro's new job with the DePaul, DePaul football team and how his new passion has come in coaching. That's right now on IndieSportsNation.com. Plus, for whom does the bell toll? And I'm Brad Brown in Greencastle. The Monon Bell is usually on display in this case, but when the rivals meet, they put it under lock and key. We'll preview this weekend's big game between Wabash and DePaul coming up. Welcome back and good evening. It's one of the great rivalries in the state and this Saturday. It's the 116th meeting between Wabash and DePaul for the Monon Bell, but it's for more than that this time around. Brad Brown has more. Let's get the bell, go Wabash! The Wabash basketball team providing some extra motivation. Another win could earn Wabash an at-large bid to the D3 playoffs. I think the game's, you know, so big to both schools that uh, I, I just can't believe that uh, the players need any extra motivation. Quarterback Matt Hudson and the rest of the seniors are hoping to win the bell back after two straight losses. A lot more focus this week. I personally have put more preparation into this week than any other game in my career, uh, hands down. So, you know, I, I want this thing so bad. Just up the road, the Tigers have already clinched a playoff berth, the first in school history. Robbie Long took over as head coach after Matt Walker's departure in August. That's something that we've been dreaming about for a long time here. There's been a lot of work put in to getting this program to the playoffs, and this group of seniors has done an unbelievable job leading us there. From the top down with, 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 with him on into the seniors and down, uh, through the rest of the ranks. I think everybody's, you know, collectively come together and, and use it as a springboard for the rest of the season. DePaul's Blackstock Stadium is the site of this weekend's game. The all-time series between the two schools is tied 53, 53, and 9. They'll break that tie on Saturday. In Greencastle, Brad Brown, Six Sports. Yes, you have to love that sound. Wabash visiting DePaul for the 116th Monon Bell game. Scoreless in the first quarter. Quarterback Spud Dick zips a pass to Nathan Evans for DePaul. They're ringing the little mini Monon Bell out there. Wabash played much better in the second half. Derek Yoder takes it across the goal line. Wabash takes the lead, but they trailed by one point late in the third. Jonathan Horn goes the distance. Honk, honk. Horn, see you later. Little Giants are taking the Monon Bell for another year. Wabash wins 32 to 19. Hey, let's talk some football now. Yesterday in Greencastle, DePaul and Wabash meeting on the football field for the 116th time in the annual Battle for the Monon Bell. Nearly 9,000 red and black clad fans jamming into Blackstock Stadium. DePaul gets on the board early second quarter. Spud Dick finds Nathan Evans for the four-yard TD. Tigers on top, 7-0. Wabash would get on the board with seven seconds to go in the half, however. Matt Hudson over the middle to Cody Lamont. Nine-yard score, PAT no good. DePaul still up by one. Little Giants start up the second half quickly, however. First drive, Derek Yoder takes the handoff, goes in from nine yards out. Wabash has its first lead, 12 to seven. This game would go back and forth, however. That's what it's all about. John Ellis helping put DePaul back out in front of the next drive, plunges in. Two-point try, failed DePaul up by one. That's when Hudson gets hot. 
finishes the third with two touchdown passes, including this one to Wes Shambly. The quarterback finishes the day with a three touchdown performance. Wabash led at 25-13. Tommy Mamborg then finishes off the Tigers, completes the 92-yard drive with the short touchdown. For the first time in three years, the Monon Bell heading back to Crawfordsville. It's there as we speak. Wabash wins convincingly 32-19 over to Paw. Finished the season at 91, kicking off a weekend celebration with the story from Greencastle. Here's our Larry Holly. All week long they talk about the history of this rivalry. Including what's different about them and them. Yeah, that kind of information pumped into us all the time. While the separation between the two rivals might seem as clear as black and red. Oh, man, that's the perfect example of uh, how fierce this rivalry is. This much lauded history would show that not to be a fact. That, that uh, hadn't really dawned on me until you just said it. That in 115 previous meetings, set aside a couple of times, DePaul has won 53, and Wabash, 53-2. All the guys that have played before us, it's unbelievable that the score is this close. And after losing two straight Bell games, Wabash came out of the locker room here at Blackstock Stadium, hoping to change the record back into their favor. And they did so in an unusual way for this series, by turning it into a one-sided game. Listen, to look up in the fourth quarter and see that we had a three-touchdown lead, I was absolutely shocked. But after four of the last five Bell games were decided by seven points or less, Hudson and the Little Giants offense made that a reality by scoring on their first four possessions of the second half. What we did, we finally came out and executed to our potential like we should have been all season, and, and the good thing was it happened at the right time. Couple that with an opportunistic defense, and Wabash scored its first victory over DePaul since 2006. A decisive win that brings home the bell. This is absolutely surreal right now. Um, it's, it's everything I imagined to be plus more. So I'm so incredibly excited right now. Um, you know, this, this team that we played had provided nothing but a house of horrors for me. And to finally get the monkey off my back, is just it just feels amazing right now. The loss last year was the uh, worst loss I've ever had in my career. You know, the most painful. And, uh, not, not just to lose, but uh, you know, just get dominated like we did. So uh, this one feels good for sure. Well, it's unbelievable. Man. I've never won a Bell game before. It's just the greatest feeling in football for me. While also having an extra ring than their opponents. Larry Holly, IndieSportsNation.com. Back here on ESPN News, I'm Michael Kim. Time now to reveal the first round matchups in the 2009 NCAA Division III Football Championship. 32 teams will play on 16 campus sites across the country beginning Saturday, November 21st. Eventually, two teams will emerge and play in the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl in Salem, Virginia on December 19th. Wabash visits Illinois Wesleyan and at the bottom of this bracket, Mount St. Joseph will match with Wittenberg. Well, Wittenberg's uh, pretty interesting, Michael. You know, they've allowed just 53 points all season in their 10 games. The, the teams that they have faced over the course of the season uh, may not be the same caliber of the kind that they'll see in the playoffs. Uh, the, the best team on their schedule, Wabash, uh, they beat them 10-7, but Wabash was without its starting quarterback, Matt Hudson. So even uh, the best team on their schedule, they didn't face at full strength. To the other half of the brackets, we have 16 teams in, 16 to go. DePaul had already captured the Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference's automatic bid before losing a heartbreaker yesterday to Wabash, a team we know is already in. 32-19, to the final score there. Let's find out about the 7-2 Tigers of DePaul. They will open next weekend at undefeated Thomas Moore. Well, I think one of the interesting uh, stories in this area is uh, Thomas Moore. Uh, last year, they did get into the playoffs. They won the automatic bid out of the President's Athletic Conference. But when they got there, they were a little bit banged up. Uh, they didn't provide a very good showing in the, in the tournament. They were one and out. This year, you know, they're healthy. They're on a roll. 10-0 for the first time in program history. Got a high seed, got a home game. And, and I think that, uh, you know, they're in position to win a couple games here.